Hello, I'm Christina from The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. I also love milk paint. But before we get started, I need to ask a favor. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me to continue to grow my channel to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. Do you like garage sales? Are you the type of person who goes to a garage sale and likes everything priced? Or do you kind of like bargains where there aren't prices? Or are you tempted by this tag, make an offer? Most recent garage sale that I visited had a lot of great items. Many were not priced. And I have to admit that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes I feel that my price in my head is lowballing the seller and I don't like to insult them. So it's always hard for me to find the perfect price. In this case though, the garage sale, I bought so many items that they threw in this Hoosier for only $10. Actually, they were gonna throw it in for free, but I told them I had to pay them something for this great piece. I have always wanted a Hoosier, although it's missing the top, it still is a great piece, and the enamel top, which you're not gonna see until the end, was in perfect, almost, condition. Wait till you see what I can do with a little bit of milk paint to bring this beauty back to life. I removed the porcelain top and it was time to get working on this beauty. I'm always amazed by how filthy some of the pieces I find are. I got out my shop vac and started getting all those little spider webs. I also removed the old casters, which were not any good. It's a really simple process. I just unscrew them with my pliers and pull them straight out. Next, it was time to wash the whole piece. Because you're using milk paint, it's a really important step. I like to use Dawn dish soap with water or, and in this case, awesome spray cleaner from the dollar store. It cuts grease really well. The bottom of one side of this old Hoosier was missing some of the veneer, and although I could peel it off, it was pretty much supporting a lot of the weight of the piece. So instead, I decided to use Bondo to patch the area. It is a two-part mixture. You want to mix both parts together and then work quickly. I also recommend use this outdoors and wear a mask. I will put a link to the product in the description box below. This is a great product for big patch jobs. While I was waiting for that to dry, I removed the hardware on the piece. The Bondo was dry, so it was time to sand. I'm using my Orbital Sander with 220 grit sandpaper. When using Bondo, I like to paint the areas so if there's any chipping from the milk paint, you won't see the bond coming through, you'll see a paint color. To cover up those areas, I'm using DIY paint in cake batter, which I thought was fairly similar to the original color underneath. DIY paint is an all-natural clay-based paint that pretty much sticks to everything, so it's great in this application. To purchase any of the products that you're seeing me use here today, you can shop my online store at shoptheturnedleg.com or you can shop my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park, Michigan. The paint was dry and it was time to start painting with milk paint. Make sure your surface is clean and dry before you start. Now to mix our milk paint. I have to tell you the color that we are using today is Sweet Pickens in a Pickle and uh, it's a color I've been dying to use since I started to carry the line. So I'm so excited to be using it here today. The great thing about milk paint is it's powdered. It comes in this little pouch and the color is on here. And by the way, that's real milk paint on the label. They don't just like print something close. So you know this is the color you're gonna be getting. What's nice about milk paint is it's all natural. You don't have to worry about all the nasty stuff in your paint. You mix up what you need that comes in a resealable bag. You can't really keep milk paint very long. You can put it in a resealable container in the fridge once you make it, it only lasts a couple of days and then it starts to smell like sour milk. So I try to mix it right when I need it and try to use it all up that day. In order to mix up milk paint, best results get hot, hot water. 
you're going to mix 50-50 water to milk paint solution. So I put it in a thermos so it would stay nice and warm. And uh, I normally, for pieces of furniture, will mix about a half a cup of water to a half a cup of paint. Put the water in first. It seems to work best for me. And then mix in your paint. Some people eyeball it, but if you're new to milk paint, it's really important you get accurate measurements. And then what I like to do, because we got all the powder on the top, is I take plastic spoon, plastic knife, and mix it in a little bit before I use an immersion blender. You can mix it with a whisk, that works fine, but it's a lot of time. So I kind of get it mixed in so that there's not just the powder on the top. And then I get one of these, my immersion blender. I got it at a garage sale, really inexpensive. Once you use it for milk paint, don't use it for anything else. And I'm just gonna mix it. This gets the milk paint really well mixed quickly so you can get working on your project. Your milk paint should kind of be like pudding if you do instant pudding like right after it's mixed it's gonna harden up just like instant pudding not that much but you want to mix it so it kind of has that consistency because i'm painting right over another paint color i don't have to worry hopefully about too much chipping if you have a piece that's really shiny you want to make sure to add in some extra bond if you're worried about having too much chipping. Remember, milk paint can chip so much that the whole thing can chip off. And then you have to start all over. So there is extra bond that you can use if you are worried. I did remove the drawers to get all of the edges underneath covered fully, and then I let it dry. We did get some chippy paint. You never know with Sweet Pickens Milk Paint what you're going to get. I was so excited to see just the right amount of chipping. And so the next step with this is to get rid of some of the flaking paint. I'm choosing to use my Orbital Sander with 220 grit sandpaper. While I'm getting rid of some of the extra chippiness, I'm also distressing the piece. You can distress as little or as much as you want. Just remember where the wear patterns would normally be on your piece. Now it's time to think top coat. If your piece is really chippy, I recommend a paste wax. Only use a liquid top coat if you are not going to have too much chippiness. I knew it might chip a little bit more, but I really wanted to seal it with Sweet Pickens Oil Wax Sealer. It is a one and done finish and it dries very durable. You just paint it on and then 20 minutes later, wipe it back. You can apply extra coats as needed to build up the shine. You can also buff it like wax. I am so excited by how this piece turned out. I have put on the enamel top and we're going to get ready for the big reveal in just a moment. Now, I really wanted this finish to not look brand new. And that might not be your thing. When you're painting, you can do you. But I love the finish from In a Pickle Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. Let's take a look at how this piece turned out. And if you're interested in the piece, it will be available in my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park, Michigan.